This week, learn how to apply the classic five-point smoother to a NAR dataset and plot the difference up using the declarative plotting interface. Welcome to another MetPy Monday. Hello, I'm John Lehman, a software engineer for Unidata. This week, I want to do a little bit different example, which is combine some calculations that we haven't seen before, which are the different smoothers that are in MetPy, and put that into the declarative plotting interface so we can plot the raw data and then our smoothed version of the data on top of it. Since we're using X-Array here, it's a little bit different than you might expect. So let's start off by getting some data. I'm going to be using the NAR example data that you can get using the get test data function. So what this function does is it goes out, and if you don't already have this example data set downloaded onto your computer, it downloads it into the appropriate cache location on your system where all of the other example data from MetPy will be stored. So for metpy.cbook, we're going to import get test data. I'm also going to import X-Ray as XR. And let's go ahead and get that example data. I'm going to call that X-Array data set that comes back NAR. So XR.open data set. And then I'm going to use my get test data function. And the test data file that we're after is NAR underscore example dot NC for NetCDF. And we have the option to get that as a file-like object, but that's not really what we want. So as file object is false. All right, so if you don't have that data set already on your computer, that'll take just a moment to download. I already have it, so nothing happens. And you'll get a download warning just to let you know that we are saving something to your system. So now we need to make a plot. And to do that, we're going to use the declarative interface and we need our units library as well so that we can go ahead and specify things like levels that we want to plot. So for metpy.plots.declarative, I'm going to import star. Again, that's the convention that we settled on for usability. From metpy.units, we're going to import units. So let's take a look at NAR and see what we've got here. So we've got 29 isobaric levels. Uh, there's a time coordinate here, and we've got some X and Y. There's one time coordinate, and then we've got an X and Y grid. Data, temperature, and geopotential height. I think let's do temperature. That's going to be something that's uh, a little bit more wiggly of a field, especially if we get a lower level. And then there are all these attributes that say things like what coordinate system it's in. Uh, what the file format was, where it came from, uh, the history, and so on. So I'm going to make a contour plot of temperature. And remember, with the declarative plotting interface, we start small and build up to larger. So we're going to make the contour plot, and then we're going to make the map panel that the contour plot goes in, and then we're going to make the panel container that that map panel goes into. I'm going to call my contour plot contour raw since this is the raw data. And it is an instance of contour plot. The next thing we need to do is set our data attribute, which is going to be NAR, the name of our data set. Contour raw field. We want to plot temperature. The level. Let's do 850 hectopascals, so 850 times units dot HPA. Uh, remember, if you're using millibar, it's M bar. MB is a millibarn, which won't work out so well for you because that's a unit of area. I'm going to specify a line color. Uh, the Tableau red is a nice red color. Line width of one, align style, uh, temperature, I'm going to traditionally plot that as a dashed line, and how many contours we want to plot. 
uh, let's say 15 for now. All right, so I'm gonna run that cell and now we've made our contours. But we still need to go ahead and make the map panel that they're going to go in. So the panel is an instance of map panel. The area is going to be over Colorado. This is an area where there's some messier temperature contours in this particular case and bordering on some cleaner contours to the east. Uh, for layers, we're going to put on a coastline, borders, and states. I'm going to set the title to be smoothing of 850 HPA temperatures. And then we need to specify what plots are in this panel. So in this case, we have our contour raw plot. And that's it. I'm going to run that cell. Now we've created our map panel. The final step is to put that map panel into a panel container. So we create an instance of panel container. We can give it a size. And then we specify the panels that are in it. We only have one panel called panel. And then finally, we're going to show. So if we let that render, what we expect to see is a plot centered on Colorado with temperature contours. And we see we've got some pretty jaggedy looking contours, both based on just the spacing, uh, but also on noisy uh, model output here, or reanalysis output. So let's go ahead and try to smooth those and clean those up a little bit. If you may be familiar with Gympack 5.9 point smoothers and so on, those are all implemented in MetPy as a function called smooth in point. In fact, we have a great example in the online docs that looks at all the different kinds of smoothing techniques that you can use within MetPy. But we'll focus on the in point smoother right now. So I'm going to go back up here. After we get our data, and before we do our plot. And I'm going to add a few cells. And notice I did that in command mode. So I'm, if I'm typing, I'm in edit mode. If I hit escape, I'm in command mode. A, insert cells above where I am. B, insert cells below where I am. Really handy keyboard shortcuts to keep uh, at the top of mind there. So I'm going to import metpy.calc as mpcalc. And after I do that, we're actually going to do the smoothing. So I'm gonna save it as a variable called smoothed. And we're gonna break this down to a few steps. You could crush this all together into one line, but this will be a little clearer. So from metpy.calc, we're going to import smooth in point. And what we need to get here is our data, which we're gonna come back and replace that with the actual expression to get the data. The number of points smoother we want, a five or a nine point, I'm gonna use a five point. And then the number of times we want to run this smoother or this filter. From a traditional time domain analysis standpoint, this might seem a little strange, but often what we've done is take a five point smoother, run it across our data, and then do it several times to smooth things out even more. In this case, I'm going to run the smoother three times. So now what do we need here instead of data? We need to access NAR temperature, but that's going to smooth all levels, all times. And that's a lot more work than we want to do. And in fact, I don't even believe that's going to quite work as we expect it to just because of how smooth endpoint is expecting the data. So I'm going to call dot cell, which is how we select something based on its name and value. So I want the isobaric level of 850. So now we've eliminated the levels, but we still need to eliminate time. I'm going to call I cell, which is select by index time equals zero. I want the zero with index time. So what we're saying to recap is it give me temperature at 850 millibars and the zero with time index. Then we're gonna smooth that using a five point smoother and run that smoother three times. 
Let's go ahead and put it back in X-Array. So to do that, NAR, and then the name, just like pandas really, that we would want. So temperature, five point, three pass. And then I'm gonna set that equal to smoothed. And you would think that would probably do the trick, but not quite. We actually need to pass a tuple here that has the dimensions of what we're giving it, since X-Array has these dimensions attached, as well as the data. And this is going to be dimensions Y and X in that order and our smooth data. So now we're one step closer, but I need to insert one more cell. Because if we look at NAR temperature 5.3 pass, we see it is a data array and it has coordinates, but it doesn't have any of those attributes. The attributes, as I said earlier, are what hold all of the projection information that the declarative plotting interface really needs to be able to plot this data. In fact, it won't work at all if we don't do this. And since I haven't changed anything about the attributes, I'm just going to copy over all the attributes from temperature into this particular data array. So I'm going to set its adders equal to NAR temperature adders. Now that we've done that, we should be able to go ahead and plot this. So I'm going to insert a cell down here. Contour smooth. It's another instance of contour plot. The data is still our NAR data set. The field this time is going to be temperature 5.3 pass. Let me scroll that up a little bit for you there. And the level, well, we don't need to specify a level because we've eliminated levels and times. So we don't have to specify that at all. We can just skip straight to line color. I'm going to make this blue so we can see the difference. The line width, we'll leave that at one. The line style, we'll stick with dashed. And contours 15. So everything is identical except for the data that we're plotting and we don't have to specify a level. Now remember, with the declarative plotting interface, once you've run a cell, we can no longer use contour raw unless we rerun that cell. So you need to run your declarative plotting codes from the first cell straight through to the last, or put it all in one cell. So now we get down here, and we need to add our contour smooth here as well. So I'm going to run these again. And there we have our plot. So we can see that this has done a pretty decent job of smoothing up some of these jagged edges. Over here on the smoother contours, you can see we've eliminated some of the smaller wiggles that were in the, the reanalysis output here. These jagged edges are gone. In here, you can especially tell a large difference. So it's good to plot your original data and your smooth data and make sure that you're not over smoothing or doing something that you probably shouldn't be but this is a great tool to clean up your plots and make them look a little nicer and remove some of that noisy reanalysis or model output. So I hope that you found this useful and I'll see you on next week's MetPy Monday.